Welcome to the 13 Original Clan Mothers, a beautiful book by Jamie Sams. This month we are exploring Loves All Things. Just offering a little bit of Australian Grandfather Sage, you can hear a kookaburra signaling, letting us know there is a way to find joy, even in the darkness, even in the shadows, even in the sorrow. And I think this chapter is all about that. Just welcoming some beautiful essential oils. This is called Sunrise New Dawn, which I think is very appropriate as the color for this month is yellow. Loves all things. Mother, show me how to love beyond my human fear. Teach me all the joys of life behind the veil of tears. Let me find the pleasure of lovers' gentle hands. Let me know the wisdom of respect without demands. O keeper of forgiveness, teach me how to see beyond the petty judgments supporting human dignity. I will learn your medicine of mother, lover, friend, teaching others how to love and broken hearts to mend. Clan Mother of the Seventh Moon Cycle. Loves All Things is the Clan Mother of the Seventh Moon Cycle and the month of July. The color connected with her medicine is yellow and her cycle represents loving the truth found in all life forms. She teaches us the wisdom of compassion and how to be a loving woman and nurturing mother. Loves All Things is the keeper of sexual wisdom and shows us that every action of physical life is as sacred as our spiritual growth, because they are the same. When we behave as if all acts are sacred, there is no judgment. This clan mother teaches us to love our bodies and to honor the pleasures of a human being. She shows us that breathing, eating, walking, playing, walk, working, observing a sunrise, making love and dancing are all acts of pleasure given by the earth mother to human beings. She asks us to do everything in life with a happy heart, in her wisdom, loves all things, teaches us that we can find the joys of physical life without trying to escape our pain through become addicted to false pleasures or compulsive behavior patterns. Loves all things is the guardian of unconditional love and is connected to grandfather sun. Like grandfather sunlight, which shines on everything without holding warmth or life-giving sustenance. This clan mother loves all her children equally, loves all things, uses a form of unconditional love to show us that she does not judge our behaviors. She is willing to love us even to allow us to go through the hard self-imposed lessons that are the consequences of following the crooked trail. Having to experience the consequences of our unloving actions may not give us pleasure but remembering and avoiding those pitfalls in the future will always bring us back into balance. This clan mother holds the wisdom of allowing and does not smother her children or impose rigid rules. She uses her ability to allow us to go through the hard life lessons on our own, but is always waiting to nurture our disappointments and mend our broken hearts. Loves all things teaches that every action in life is equal because the reaction is equal to the original deed. If we are good to our bodies, our bodies are healthy and good to us. If we nurture and respect ourselves, we will command the same respect and nurturing from others. If we lie to ourselves, others will lie to us in kind. If we think positive thoughts, good things will happen to support our attitudes. If we apply the love of truth to all things, we find ways to know and love the self. This clan mother instructs us in a way that applies the concept of free will in its purest form. Her foremost understanding is that we will evolve no matter what happens. Healing and growth may take many cycles of the medicine wheel, but she is willing to love us unconditionally through all those rites of passage until we love ourselves enough to break the pattern of self-induced slavery. The freedom found in loving the self without conditions is the talent that makes loves all things the guardian of children. She allows children to develop loving self-expression, encouraging them to, to be their personal best. 
This clan mother uses the child's love of discovering life as the guidance for raising the young. She teaches the child within us to accept love, to give love, to find ways to love the self and to love the truth above all else. Loves all things is the mother nurturer, a sensual lover and keeper of all acts of pleasure and the guardian of sexual wisdom. This clan mother embodies the attributes of the devoted friend who sees the strength of our personal medicine as well as our weaknesses, accepting both sides without judgment. Patiently, she supports us in our growth process by pointing out our talents, urging us to grow, loves all things, ignores our unwillingness to use the talents we have at hand because she understands that one day our personal healing paths will find it ourselves. And the story of when um, Loves All Things was a human before she entered the Sky Nation to support us from spirit, she was a human for as long as it took to learn the lessons she needed to learn to then be able to support us in our growth. And when I say us, I mean the sisterhood, but of course that ripples out to everybody we touch. And it's called the sacredness of love. Loves All Things felt a warm shudder move up her body when she relaxed in the light of Grandfather Sun. It felt wonderful to gather that golden warmth into herself and to let her body absorb the goodness of Grandfather Sun's unconditional love. Loves All Things turned the palms of her hands upward to collect the sunbeams as if they were the amber nectar from precious tropical flowers. While the water spirits of the running river sang her song, she was reminded of the multitude of simple pleasures that could be experienced in a human body. The bubbling rush of water undulating over the round stones in its path gurgled a continuous greeting. An occasional spray of tiny water droplets showered her feet with new sensations while she took in every perception of her human senses could encompass. Love's all things smelled the rich perfume of wet soil at the river's edge mixed with the many fragrances of wild flowers and blooming herbs. The faint scent of wild green onions coming from the shaded woods behind her reminded her of the many savory foods of the earth mother freely offered. The smell of moist fallen leaves in the undergrowth carrot growth carried with it a faint odor of blooming berry and grapevines, promising an abundant time of gathering during the ripening months. She reveled in the perpetual goodness that being human offered. Loves All Things opened her eyes a crack to gaze at the sunlight and the rainbow prisms it reflected through the lattice created by her eyelashes. The brilliant effervescent colors danced around her line of vision, giving her yet another pleasure to enjoy. She could see the reflections of colors caught in the moisture of the perspiration on her skin. She noticed that water, like feelings, could reflect any subtle um, nuance in the changing play of light and shadow. She remembered how she had been amazed by the extensive and varied sensations she had encountered when she first embodied her human female form. She had been like hummingbird then, tasting everything that the flowers of human experience offered, flitting from one to another in total delight. Once she had watched Hummingbird dart and taste all the different nectars he found, flowering in a woodland meadow. She decided that the world was, be, was to be savoured with the same joy. Those early days had taught her the medicine of Hummingbird that offered the same attitude of love and joy that continued to shape every experience in her earthwalk. Loves All Things silently sent her thanks to the smallest of all winged creatures who hummed the song of letting the joys of life chase away negativity and fear. Lost in her feelings, the relaxed clan mother barely noticed that she was following the colors of a sunbeam through her eyelashes and into a sparkling set of memories that reminded her of the joys and trails she had discovered on the Good Red Road. She remembered how she had been initiated into sexuality learning the pleasures of coupling in a field of corn poppies and soft green moss. The day had been a warm one, filled with the sounds of her own pounding heart and the calls of thrushes of, and larks. The birds were circling, then diving into the meadow to feast on wild grass seeds and grains. She was walking next to a man who had touched her heart deeply during the past 
few moons. Together they had explored the surrounding foothills and had shared many fires. He had protected her, had provided their fires with food to cook, and had shown her the respect due to a female. This man knew that every woman was an extension of the Earth Mother, and that to harm a woman in any way could bring the consequence of scarcity to all the children of Earth. The night before, as they sat by a fire, he had spoken to her the responsibility of pleasuring a woman in a way that would teach and preserve the joys of coupling. Loves All Things had discovered that being near this man brought many new and curious feelings. Her body would react in the strangest ways if their hands should inadvertently touch or if their eyes should meet. She did not know how to gauge the flood of emotions or the rush of blood that would set her face on fire. She was innocent of the quickening drumbeat of her heart and the warm gush of heat coursing up her thighs. Feathered Dog, the man at her side, was very different from the other men she had encountered. None of them had ever made her feel this way. The attraction she felt for Feathered Dog gave her a sense of longing and excitement, but she did not know how to deal with the flood of emotions that overwhelmed her when she was with him. Some feelings were extremely pleasurable and others bordered on aching pains of longing. She was confused because she did not understand what she was longing for. Sometimes it was difficult to breathe when he placed his arm over her shoulder or smiled when looking deep into her eyes. The mating dance had lasted three moons, leaving loves all things enthralled with the sensuality of touching and feeling nurtured. The pitch of intimacy had grown during that time as she and Feathered Dog had shared their innermost thoughts, but not their sleeping robes. Today in the field of corn poppies that radiated all the salmon rose colors of a newborn sun, she would open herself to her man in a new way. Feather Dog had earned his name because he carried the medicine of Feather, symbolizing a message of spirit, and Dog, who taught the value of, of serving humankind with loyalty. This man embodied the three medicines needed in any relationship, respect, trust, and intimacy. Feather Dog understood the importance of building a strong foundation of mutual respect that then gives birth to trust. He knew that when trust and respect are present in any relationship, intimacy and the sharing of the heart's desires can bloom. Rooted in fertile ground, in his wisdom, Feather Dog had allowed Loves All Things the time she needed to experience building this foundation for their relationship. From this strong and caring base of togetherness, the sexual attraction had naturally evolved. Loves All Things recalled every gentle caress of the day long ago and relived the beauty and sacredness of that first coupling. She had been given a gift that was the Earth Mother's desire for all her children, discovering the pleasures of human sexuality without guilt, feel, fear or pain. Over the next few years, Loves All Things and Feathered Dog shared all of the joyous pleasures of life and love in their mated union. The happy experiences shared with her mate and the birthing of their children had taught Loves All Things the joys of nurturing and being nurtured. Through the sexual rites of passage shared with Feather Dog, she had become the keeper of sexual wisdom. Through mothering their offspring, she had rediscovered the world through the eyes of her children. The wonder of life and the excitement of being alive had allowed her to master the art of being a warm and sensual woman and a nurturing and understanding mother. Her heart filled with overflowing love as she remembered the goodness life had given her through her daughter and three strong sons. Saying goodbye to Feathered Dog had been difficult when he passed into the spirit world. She experienced more pain when she buried her children and their children after watching them all grow old while she still carried a body that did not age. Loves All Things had developed a resentment during those passing winters that brought forth one of her hardest lessons in human life. The Earth Mother had never said that any of the 13 aspects of herself would find being human an easy task, but Loves All Things had conveniently forgotten the consequence of having a human body that did not die. She resented the fact that she was left to enjoy the pleasures of being human while she buried her loved ones and they went to live, to the, they went to live in the other side camp of the spirit world. The clan mother was tested time and time again when her resentment 
would throw up the feelings of joy that she could have experienced had she given the negativity away. She found it hard to love the truth that she was immortal and still harder to love the life around her while she was grieving the love she had shared in the past. Loves All Things wanted her family back. She wanted to recapture the playful medicine of her daughter, Little Otter, to fill those lonely times when the shadow of resentment darkened her path. The Earth Mother spoke to Loves All Things, reminding her of the medicine carried by Otter, Otto, Otter, her, her daughter's namesake. The clan mother was not ready to reclaim the balanced woman's medicine of being an adult who was young at heart, playing or working with the same innocence and delight. She could not see the value of create, reclaiming the balance needed in her life by accepting what had passed, like a child deciding to live the happiness of the present. Loves all things was forced on all the love she felt she had lost. She was sorry, she was focused on all the love she felt she had lost. Forgetting to notice the gifts of renewal and abundance she was being offered through the Earth Mother's wisdom. Loves All Things found herself judging all acts of life as never being enough to fill the growing hole in her heart. She insisted on living in the past and forgot the joy she had once found in being alive. She marched for many suns and sleeps to visit the sea where she intended to share her salty tears of regret and remorse with the ocean. Once she arrived at the home of the endless water, she tossed herself into the brine, wanting to die, forgetting that this too was impossible. As her body sank beneath the frothy waves, she was stung by eel, making her humiliation complete. Dragging herself to the sandy dunes, she screamed in pain and stared Start, started, started to accuse herself of all the victim-like tendencies she had gathered during her shadowy passage into sorrow. Loves all things, things began blaming herself for never growing old. She blamed her family for being human. She blamed the Earth Mother for giving her the experience of pleasure and now this intolerable pain. She ranted and raved, sending her disgust and revulsion, revulsion to the four winds as she cried out in anger. The growing red welt on her leg where eel had stung her reflected the rage she was feeling toward herself and toward the world. She was furious, so furious that such love and such pleasure had carried consequences. Loves all things had intended to live life seeking nothing but ultimate happiness. There was not supposed to be another upsetting side of human experience. Life with pain was not fair. She was helplessly unable to stop the sorrowful existence she had abhorred, abhorred, <laughs> even by trying to take her own life. Lost in her own misery, loves all things, noticed nothing around her until a gale brought crashing waves and the sound of the thunderbird's wings slammed at her back into the moment. Hino, the thunder chief, had sent the Thunderbird with his clapping rolls of thunder to teach loves all things how her own feelings had affected the balance in nature. She heard the voice of Hino as he bellowed into her ears. Daughter, you have created these icy winds because your heart has grown hot cold. You have forsaken your name and brought your own wrath to bear on other children of earth who depend on you for love and nurturing. In your anger, you have created a storm that will send many to their deaths. And yet you have learned nothing of the scarcity you bring when you refuse to love. You too must weather the storm that you have brought forth and you must see for yourself the kind of pain you have created inside your body and how that pain can harm the natural world. As soon as Hino's face faded, voice loves all things was struck by a crashing wave of water that dragged her body into the raging sea down she went went being tumbled and rolled by the onslaught of pummeling waves spinning amid the currents being tossed to and fro she slipped into the darkness of her own unconsciousness and self-pity the last thing she remembered was that something was very very wrong 
The burning sensation in her leg and the unpleasant smell of rotting flesh brought loves all things to her senses. She struggled to get her stomach under control, but re retched anyway. Salt water poured from her mouth as she felt her insides knot and release time and again. When she could finally prop herself up on a nearby boulder, she was amazed by the wreckage around her. She, the beach was covered with the bodies of all sorts of creatures who had died in the storm. Silent tears etched their way down her cheeks as loves all things took in the horror of her own creation. The wreckage in front of her was wrought by her compulsive self-pity. She had come to a place within herself where she hated who and what she was. After Feather Dog had died, she had fed her self-pity by taking lovers whom she did not love. She had used them for the pleasure they could give her. She had broken some hearts along the way and had followed into projecting her own pain onto others by denying how her actions were literally destroying all the lessons of respect, trust and intimacy that had been her mate's medicine. Now she had come to this piteous ebb, the beach filled with broken bodies littering the sands around her. As she touched the angry welt on her leg, Eel's voice filtered through the lapping waves, reaching her waterlogged senses. Loves all things, listen to me, your heart, sorry, hear me with your heart. I am the conductor of love. This is my medicine. The electric bolts of my sting were not meant to harm you or shock you. It was necessary to show you that sometimes through pain, love can be reclaimed. If you will accept my medicine, I may be able to help you. Why would anyone want to help me, Eel? I have nearly destroyed myself and all those who I pledged to love before I, can, I came to walk the earth. Eel replied, I have not forgotten the true meaning of love. Mother, it knows no boundaries, finds no faults, and waits not on time to make it right. The fire of grandfather's son mixes with the water of the earth mother inside of me. I choose to be the conductor of unconditional love. Can't you accept their love and mine? Loves all things sobbed as she nodded, feeling like she was given the opportunity to come home to who she really was. The clan mother fully realized that she had punished herself and everyone around her while she walked with the shadow. More than anything, she now wanted to reclaim the love, releasing the darkness of blame and fear. fear. Earth felt the change in clan mother's heart and continued to speak. Loves all things. To reclaim the abundance you once had in your life, you must cross the bridge that you create between the shadow side of your nature and your loving heart. The bridge may appear to you like a rainbow because it reflects all of the beautiful colors found in life. The bridge is made of forgiveness that spans the abyss of human fear, bitterness, hatred, and jealousy. Those hurtful emotions are adopted when the heart is broken in order to mask the pain. You must cross the bridge willingly. To make that journey, you must drop all negative judgments and or blame you have about yourself and or any other person, place, event, location, or idea that you have ever experienced. Mm. Love's all, th all things mine was suddenly flooded with the memories of blame, shame, regret, wrongdoing, and senseless pain she had caused herself and others. Forgiving all those things would be an unbelievably challenging task, but she realized that she must start somewhere to reclaim the love that had once been her guiding light. She spent many suns and sleeps walking by the seaside, washing away the shadowy side of her nature. 
she felt every emotion without letting herself be drawn into them again. Slowly, she observed a change in her sense of well-being and practiced finding something she could love about herself and the world around her. She whispered words of thanksgiving every time she encountered a new breakthrough, destroying the chains of heartbreak that had bound her to a lifeless existence. The aliveness began returning as she fortified each forward step in her healing process by thanking the great mystery for the gift of life. Her changed attitude toward the world around her brought back the vibrancy of the colors in nature that had come to see seem so lackluster. When she swam beneath the waves, the coral reefs were, were treasure troves of creatures who sought her company, reflecting the rainbow colors of the bridge that forgiving had created in her life. As she reached out to life once again, the eight arms of octopus taught her that she was enveloped with love in all directions, as long as she desired it. The purple ink of the octopus sprayed into the water to protect himself from praying mantises, showed loves all things that the color purple, representing gratitude and healing, was also her protection against the shadow's destructive nature. As long as she returned thanks for every healing step she took, the healing would continue. Every so often, a gray day would bring foggy memories of past into love's all things experience. At first, she resisted the thoughts that brought up the fear of her shadow side. But unlike her past solution, which was denying the existence of her troubled mind, she confronted the memories by finding ways she could solve those past situations. Her newly developed skill of being grateful for every lesson in life kept her from returning to the reckless behavior that had once forced her to use pleasure as an escape, numbing everything into oblivion. Love's All Things was learning to be accountable for her actions, realizing that every time she fed the positive side of a challenge, by looking for ways to express her natural ability to love all experiences equally, she could easily find solutions. She noticed that the opposite Negative reaction would also make her accountable by throwing her into old feelings of unworthiness that made her want to run away and hide. Soon the day came when Love's All Things was confident that she was ready to walk among her fellow human beings without reflecting her past upon them. She started out on her trek, moving through foothills and valleys, traversing forests and crossing streams. In the dawn light on the sixth sun of her journey, she woke to the sounds of thirsty deer taking a drink. Deer was one of my first animal totems. Loves all things intently watched deer as she nudged her fawn towards the embankment of moss growing close to the brook. Loves all things fought back the tears welling in her eyes as memories of little otter, her daughter, surfaced in her mind. Her little girl had first learned to walk on moss-covered knolls near a brook, very similar to the one in the clearing. Deer felt the clan mother's anguish and turned, speaking to loves all things. You are the mother of all acts of pleasure, loves all things, and yet you have forgotten to be gentle with yourself. Hmm. You would be kind and caring to me and my fawn, but you are merciless toward yourself. We creatures have heard of your torment and of your healing, and we have rejoiced in your progress. I have sent I was sent to cross your path, reminding you of the tender and sensitive nature of my medicine. Hmm. Not so that you will apply that comforting calmness to others, but so you will stop being so hard on yourself. In all ways but one, you are human. The fact that you will not experience the aging and death process of your body does not mean that you have to push yourself beyond the capabilities of your humanness. Hmm. Sweet mother, there is no fault in being human. Your feelings will always be part of you. They will never vanish, but it is not wrong to touch them from time to time with gentleness. You have crossed the bridge of forgiveness and now you must rediscover the way to be gentle with yourself. Finding the balance between strength and gentleness is a delicate matter 
You may call on my medicine any time you need. With those words, deer and fawn were gone. The forest enveloped them, leaving loves all things to her thoughts. The words spoken by deer had bolstered the clan mother's resolve to find the tenderness with herself that she needed in order to carry on. In gentleness, loves all things sent her words of thanksgiving to all her creature children and to the great mystery. Then she washed in the stream, ate some berries and looked toward the pathway, starting her trek once again. Two moons later, she reached an encampment of two leggeds who were busy demonstrating all of the hurtful actions that humans could inflict on one another. She realized that her time with them would test everything she had ever learned. This lesson in life would provide loves all things with the opportunity to walk through the final rite of passage of loving the truth in all things. As the keeper of forgiveness, she would be called upon to show these members of the earth tribe how to heal their hearts. The challenge of completing the task that had been placed in her path brought up feelings, fleeting thoughts of wanting to run from her mission but instead she gave thanks of her opportunity for growth. Every time a member of this band of humans tried to pass rumors to the clan mother about someone else, she countered with a comment about the positive nature or traits of that person being talked about. When someone was feeling dejected, she was the first to show gentleness and loving encouragement. When a man was on the rampage spitting anger at those nearest to him, she chased the clouds away by teaching how all anger is really directed at the self. Forgiving the self for being human or for depending on another to do things one should have taken care of on their own usually dissolve the anger instantly. Winters passed and new generations of this tribe were born, <clears throat> learning the gifts of forgiveness, gentleness, and the love that loves all things freely offered. Loves all things traveled to different clans and tribes, sharing the experiences of her worth, earth walk and the wisdom she had gathered through her healing process. She taught young women to respect their bodies and to nurture their children. She shared the lessons of sacred sexuality, respect, trust, and intimacy with the young men who would then use their understanding of sexual wisdom and relationships to form lasting bonds with their mates. The mother nurturer taught the children how to enjoy the pleasure of being human by loving the coldness on their feet when standing in a mountain stream or by savoring the steaming aroma of a hot stew as much as its delicious flavors. The senses were there to be honored and respected because those skills of perception gave humankind the pleasures of life. Through example, Loves All Things showed her human children that every act of physical life was sacred when it was approached in a loving and meaningful way, nothing having to do with sexuality was judged as dirty or wrong by the keeper of sexual wisdom. The mother of all acts of pleasure taught that the functions of the human body were honored, natural processes that kept the body healthy and full of life. She showed the young adults the way male bodies gave from the genitals and received through the heart and how the female body received through the genitals and gave from the heart. When a female and a male stood face to face, this process of giving and receiving created a circle between the two. If one or the other was cold, unfeeling or afraid, the circle was not allowed to complete itself. When this type of disconnection occurred, it was time to find out which of the three points of respect, trust and intimacy had been lost. For the circle of sexual sharing between male and female to be restored, both partners had to be willing to open themselves to giving and receiving. This sacred bond could only be achieved if mutual respect, trust and intimacy formed the foundation that supported their love. Loves All Things taught her children that coupling was a physical form of communication between humans that represented the male and the female sides of each individual. If the individual was unhappy with himself or herself, that feeling was then used to fracture the person's internal sense of wholeness forming a barrier to the sharing that could be experienced with the other. Through loving the self and through forgiveness, healing and healing the heart's hurts could take place. When one was able to forgive the self, it was much easier to forgive others for insensitive words or, or unconscious actions. 
go to. Loves All Things re reviewed her own path of joy, pain, self-destruction, and ultimately forgiveness and healing every time she watched another human being go through similar lessons. Each time she saw herself in another, the reassuring pleasure of being able to direct her energy in a positive fashion came forth. She had become a healed healer through facing her shadow with love. I love that. When she had learned to love the truth found in every human lesson in life, she had learned to love the part of herself that had driven her nearly to destruction. She could own her name now because she did love all things. She had put aside the shadow's need to be critical of the self and the others and had donned the ability of love the truth in every person on every spoke of the wheel of life. She had gained the compassion of a once tormented woman who had loved and lost, nearly lo losing herself in the process. She had walked in the moccasins of every broken hearted two legged who had been hardened by the pain and through experience, she had learned to reclaim the precious gift of love. Loves all things had learned that salty tears were the beginnings of transformation and that through these droplets of anguish, the waters of forgiveness began to flow. The clan mother of the seventh moon cycle had come to understand that healing begins with forgiving the self for the could have beens, the should have beens on the good red road. Compassion was born from the hurts of the clan mother's life and in gently finding compassion for herself, her healing was accomplished. The road back from her pain into the light of love had been a long one but the restored pleasure she found in life was worth the effort. The sounds of the river at her side brought her from her memories and helped her focus on the pleasurable warmth moving up her arms from her open hands. The rainbow colors of grandfather's son filtered through her eyelashes, display curious images of human forms dancing. Loves all things felt a tug on her heart as she recognized feathered dog, little otter, and her three strong sons dancing in the rainbow lights. In her vision, the earth mother called to loves all things, letting her know that her earth walk was complete. A deafening hum filled her ears and she was floating over the river. When the clan mother looked down again, she caught her own reflection in the glassy waters of a still pond. She had become hummingbird and was flying on the streaming light of a sunbeam. Upward she traveled, traversing the deep cornflower blue of space until she passed through a flaming wall of fire, being propelled into the body of grandfather's son. <laughs> the fire had burned away her hummingbird body and once again she transformed into her female human form and found herself in the arms of Feather Dog. <laughs> As the circle of their love was made complete through the reunion of their hearts, the two lovers became one dazzling star. The burning star flew from Grandfather Sun and took its place in the Sky Nation. For six moons, the star of love lights the twilight sky and is called the evening star. Then for the following six moons, the star of love appears at dawn and is called the Morning Star. Through the story of Loves All Things and Feathered Dog, we are enabled to see both sides of our natures. That wholeness is reflected in the bird of love and joy who knows that there is no separation in the human spirit, except the il illusions we impose upon ourselves. Hummingbird hums now and flies in circles because he knows the lover's secret. To love all things 
is to love every reflection of who and what you are. Hmm. How can we love everything? I invite you. What is it that you have yearned your whole life to love? What is it that you can once and for all bring compassion to? Something you wish you hadn't done? Something you wish you hadn't said? Can you allow those feelings to pass through your body without judgment, without guilt and shame and sorrow? Can you allow yourself to love even that? And the beauty of doing shadow work through these incredible 13 clan mothers is that really all of them and all of their colors are needed in every rite of passage. I found this beautiful shawl, which was my grandmother's. And I just love it because As the story said, if we can draw love, acceptance, and humility and compassion to even the bits of us that are ouchy and painful, if we can bring those elements of forgiveness to each moment and find love in those moments, then we contribute to the now in this beautiful, loving, understanding, all-encompassing way. And that's where that rainbow bridge of forgiveness comes in. It's up to each, each of us to build that bridge. Nobody can build the bridge for us. Nobody can walk across it. Nobody can bring it into our hearts except for us. And when we realize that it's possible, I think the first step is to be curious and to ask, what would it take for me to love that? What would it take for me to bring compassion to that, to forgiveness, bring to forgiveness to that thought or to that memory or to that that little bitterness that I'm holding, that resentment, guilt, blame, what would it take? And then as soon as we bring curiosity to that moment, it just softens everything. And it opens that potential for unconditional love for, for every aspect of our earth walk, every aspect of our ancestors' choices too, and our our path that we're taking. And I just love, loves all things for so many reasons. Hmm. And there, I thought of so many things as I was reading, but now it's all just gone out of my mind when I, <laughs> when I was just feeling the love of, loves all things, being reunited with Feathered Dog, that was just so beautiful. And it reminded me of my sisters who have lost their loved ones, you know. I have sisters in this beautiful circle who, and I don't just mean the group that meets here in person every full moon, I mean all of us, all of us, every, every sister on the planet is part of the sisterhood, part of this red thread. <laughs> I have sisters who've lost children, sisters who've lost sisters, mothers, fathers, brothers, cousins, nephews, animals, their homes, their belongings, their identity. And if I speak about first losing humans, this chapter 
really invites a beautiful way to grieve. It allows you to accept the emotions and the accept the sadness that they're no longer part of our physical realm, to let that pass through you, but that instead of dealing with it in a way that escapes it, and as we know, that that technique is is common. It's a it's a human defense mechanism. People put up walls and bitterness and anger and resentment, and then they try to um, avoid the feelings by becoming addicted, whether it's addicted to to, fault, to negative speech or addicted to that self blame that. Oh, of course it happened to me or that would be my luck or, you know, that would happen. That would be, you know, just that sort of that negative self-talk or they become addicted to alcohol or prescription drugs or cannabis or, or they become addicted to looking for what's missing in life. They become addicted to focusing on the lack. And seeing that focusing on the love as an alternative to focusing, focusing on the lack, that focusing on the love can, yeah, it can open you up to the joy that's available by being alive, by not being the one that went to the spirit realm, I guess I could say it. And I love the book because, you know, I believe that our loved ones are not gone. They may have transcended this physical body, but that they're just across the veil and that we can still speak to them and communicate with them and they can give us signs and stories and, and they are always there for us to connect with. And when we, when we can, we can connect with them in a physical way like this, like the way that I was feeling the way she was connecting with him. And we, we, we can do that too. We can connect with our loved ones in that way. That was really beautiful. And then when we actually do go into the spirit realm, then we'll be reunited with them, of course. But all that's possible now as we, as we live and as we walk this, this, um, this earth walk. There is so many beautiful, so much beautiful wisdom that we can gain. Um, I love this, this sacred sexuality of respect, trust and intimacy. I think that's a really beautiful lesson for, lessons for our daughters and sons. But the, the flip side is, if we've made some terrible choices and we've acted unconsciously and been promiscuous, can we love that? Can we love that? And can we love that even those lessons had consequences, but those were also part of this earthwalk that they taught us or taught me valuable lessons so can I even love that um, for me when we when we can love like that fully can we love all aspects of self and when we love all aspects of self we can feel as though there's no shadow and no separation. And when I love that way, I know that I have transcended the rainbow bridge to forgiveness because I've evolved to a place where going, over, going back over past pains becomes irrelevant because there is no separation. When you know there is no separation, when you know we are all one consciousness and we're all one um, one expression of love, when you know that, well, then there's nothing to forgive because there's no separate person to forgive. It was all part of us. Everyone is an expression of us. Everyone is, um, yeah. To me, that's the ultimate loves all things where you can even love your oppressor, the one who wronged you. That's really beautiful to me. I love that when we are good to our bodies, it is good to us. When we are positive thinking, then we have positive things happen. When we, um, 
you know this is all really beautiful lessons to me I love that um, I love the gentleness that deer the medicine of the deer be gentle with yourself because when we're healing and when we are looking at our shadow sides when we do this book perhaps for the first time we need to be gentle with ourselves because when you look in the mirror and you notice that you have been you've adopted these coping strategies for decades maybe for generations maybe your mother did it your grandmother did it your grandfather did it and so maybe it's just been taught to you and when you do this work when you commit to walking with the 13 original clan mothers and you're looking in the mirror and you're being honest with yourself and you see oh okay that's why i've been dealing with things these ways this way that's why i've had my barriers up that's why i've moved my body in a way all this that i've been doing was to protect me so i wouldn't have to experience my trauma and this book offers us another way another alternative and i think the first step is to be gentle with yourself to forgive yourself that everything you have done you have done with the most beautiful and loving intentions and we do what we can with what we know and when we know more then we can change and this is just a little suggestion hey you know you could try you could try things in a different way you could but it starts with being gentle and it starts with forgiving yourself not be hard on yourself and then it starts with looking at how you react to things and how that has a ripple effect and how everything that we do and think and say ripples out into the world into the natural world and affects it so can we take responsibility for that starting with loving ourselves wow 51 minutes <laughs> i better sign off i love you all so much i can't wait to explore the clan mother with you next month <laughs> happy loves all things